bipartisan leaders and officials met today to discuss a plan to combat the rise in violent crime. Coming up, we'll tell you what they think needs to be done. It's Graffiti Free Phoenix Awareness Month. Coming up, we go out with a team to clean up the city. And later, we take you to the WM Phoenix Open for Pro-Am Day. We'll show you which celebrities are there. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Molly Hudson. And I'm Mia Marquez. Thank you for joining us. Violent crime is on the rise both nationally and in Arizona. A bipartisan group of House members on Capitol Hill today unveiled what they think may be a solution. Cronkite News reporter Alexia Stanbridge reports from our Washington Bureau. The bill is called the Victim Act. It would direct additional funds to police agencies and support victims and their families. A move supporters say is needed. It helps us train officers, bring more officers on board, identifies clearly for a funding source for those officers, uh, identifies how we work with victims and help within the criminal justice system itself. It comes amid a surge in violent crime in recent years. Nationally, violent crime rose from 380 for every 100,000 Americans in 2019 to 398 per 100,000 in 2020, the last year for which numbers are available. The Victim Act will help address this issue by supplying much needed grant funding to agencies to fill, replenish and train their homicide and detective forces. The rate is even higher in Arizona, where there were 484 violent crimes per 100,000 people in 2020. That's why Congressman O'Halloran says he's a co-sponsor. When we invest in training and hiring and support of our officers, we invest in the community. Details of the bill are still being worked out, but one thing's for sure, no one here thinks defund the police is the answer. When we talk to communities, particularly those in some of the most high crime areas, they will say, no, we don't, we, we, we don't want to defund the police. We want to fund the police. Representatives who are backed today by police representatives called the bipartisan bill a, quote, common sense measure, no matter what party you belong to. Solving crimes and bringing justice to victims and their families makes our streets safer. And it also will improve relationships between communities and the police who serve them. The bill was introduced in October, and even though it has 30 co-sponsors, it still has a long way to go. Bo Halloran says it's, quote, a step in the right direction. Our citizens need to protect, be protected, our officers need to be protected, and that's that goes with training, picking out the right officers, making sure we have follow through and the, the investment in our society that this Congress should be doing. In Washington, Alexia Stambridge, Cronkite News. We reached out to local police agencies for reaction to the bill. Sergeant Hector Encinas, a spokesperson for the Tempe Police Department, said his agency welcomes any financial or other support that, quote, helps us do our job. Two elected officials and political rivals headed to court again. Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs is suing Arizona Attorney General Mark Brnovich after Brnovich threatened to prosecute her. Brnovich said he would criminally charge Hobbs if she temporarily shut down an online system that allows election candidates to collect qualifying signatures for the ballot. He sent a letter to Hobbs last month. Hobbs said the temporary shutdown was required for an update to the system adding new congressional and legislative district mapping data. She said Brnovich was threatening her with criminal prosecution for, quote, performing her duties as the state's chief elections officer. Hobbs wants a judge to issue an injunction to prohibit Brnovich from investigating or prosecuting her. Both have a vested interest in the system. Brnovich is campaigning to be the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate. Hobbs is campaigning to be the Democratic nominee for governor. Senator Mark Kelly is the second Democratic senator calling for the suspension of federal gas tax to help consumers struggling with rising fuel prices. According to AAA, the average price of gas nationally exceeds about $3.45 a gallon. This could go even higher during peak driving season. Kelly says that Arizonans are paying some of the highest prices for gas we have seen in years. That puts a strain on families who need to fill up the tank for work and school. He says the bill will lower gas prices by suspending the 18.4 cent federal gas tax through the end of the year. The bill remains under consideration. 
state Senate Republicans voted to expand the school voucher program. The bill passed through the Education Committee without any Democratic support. The expansion would allow around 500,000 additional students to qualify for empowerment scholarships. This covers students who attend low-income schools or whose families qualify for food stamps, welfare, or subsidized housing. Children of military veterans, police, firefighters, and nurses are also included in the bill. Advocates against the bill argue that the state should dedicate more money to improve underperforming schools rather than expand the voucher system. Graffiti has an impact beyond just what you can see. February is Graffiti Free Awareness Month in Phoenix. It's an effort to tackle the crime and to discourage more graffiti. Faith Abercrombie followed one of the graffiti busters and discovered the team covers or removes up to 200 sites of tagging each day. Sometimes it's hidden in plain sight. Other times you can't miss it. We'll keep coming back every other day to remove that graffiti. It's not a problem. Michael Rios hits the road early four days a week. He is known as a graffiti buster. It is a passion of mine to go out there and make this, uh, the city beautiful. The city of Phoenix has 17 people removing graffiti seven days a week. Their target goal is to clean up 40 markings a day, a goal that isn't hard to reach. We have our, our, our phones that actually uh, sends all our, our caseloads to us. So we have a bunch of cases on here, then on top of what we see in the city. I just think anybody should just report to graffiti as soon as they see it. It's, it's getting out of control. If you see something, say something. You can report any graffiti sighting in Phoenix, and at the click of a button, within 48 hours, it's like it never happened. I'm going to push everybody to that My Phoenix 311 app, because everybody has a smartphone. Rio's power washes, paints, and uses chemicals to remove unwanted markings. See how it just comes right off? It does more than just erase a blemish. It can make neighborhoods feel safer. That tells people who are in that area, who live in the area or work in the area, that that crime like never occurred. It's a race against time. The quicker we get the graffiti down, the less likely it is to recur in that same location. But at the end of the day, the main goal remains the same. To make the community look a lot nicer than what it did that day we went into that community. In Phoenix, Faith Abercrombie, Cronkite News. Along with the My Phoenix 311 app, you can report graffiti by calling 602-534-4444 or emailing blight at phoenix.gov. A new initiative from the Department of Homeland Security is helping deported immigrants who are U.S. military veterans. The agency has partnered with the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Defense. It helps deported veterans connect with legal advisors about their options for returning legally to the U.S. Veterans can also learn how to get government benefits and COVID-19 vaccines. DHS has said that dozens of veterans have already accessed the system so far, and several have returned to the U.S. under its new initiative. The Glendale Fire Department has received a nearly $1 million grant to screen firefighters for cancer. The FEMA Firefighter Assistance Grant will fund two years of cancer screenings through the Vincere Cancer Center. This will allow more than 250 firefighters to be screened. But it doesn't end there. Glendale's fire captain says that the city has agreed to continue doing these screenings beyond the grant period. The department started the screenings earlier this week. A Phoenix school district is welcoming more than 800 children from refugee camps around the world in order to help better their education. The Cartwright School District's Immigration, Refugee, Scholar and Family Support Program started this school year. Students have been coming from several countries including Kenya, Tanzania and Afghanistan. All students are taught the same lessons but with many children not being fluent in English, teachers communicate with kids in the program through Google Translate. Coming up on Cronkite News, researchers in Arizona may have found the solution to growing crops under extreme weather conditions. How the University of Arizona is researching one plant's biology to experiment how it can withstand hot environments. Plus, we take a look at Uber's new safety feature and how it's going to help remind passengers to buckle up. Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. 
our cutting edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons, your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Every day I wake up, my first thought is, how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches me, they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. Here we go, lights up. Whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. Tell us what you think. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. Uber is creating a new app feature that helps remind passengers and drivers to buckle up before hitting the road. The new feature will involve an alert popping up on both drivers and passengers' phones once the ride begins. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, 47% of over 22,000 passengers that died in accidents did not wear a seatbelt back in 2019. Advocates for highway and auto safety says passengers in the back seat are twice as likely to die if not wearing a seatbelt. Maricopa County will award $3 million to food banks around the valley to support operations. The funding comes from the American Rescue Plan Act and will help make sure food banks have equipment, staffing and supplies. More than 30 food banks will receive funds to increase storage and buy more supplies. This additional grant brings the total support from federal recovery to over $6 million in the last two years. Growing crops under extreme weather conditions has been difficult for farmers, but some researchers in Arizona are working on an experiment that might help solve the problem. Cronkite News reporter Valeria Rodriguez tells us how a small weed can be the key. Carefully picking the most important part of the plant, student Crisan Salazar de Leon hopes to create a new variety of an Eropsis Tatiana. He is one of the students that are using this plant as a base for the experiment. But what we hope is that since it's a normal plant, whatever we can learn about it will be true for all plants. But I also want to say it has more genes than we do. And we think that's because it needs to be able to sit in one spot and deal with all the different changes in the environment. Arabidopsis Tatiana grows under extreme conditions. Scientists believe Arizona is the best place to use as a model to explain how other plants can withstand the extreme weather. The world is going to be turning more and more like Arizona as our planet heats up. And so here is a fantastic place to study what the future environment will be. And so if we can understand how plants grow with limited water and really hot environments, and perhaps we can create new breeds and varieties that would be able to grow better. The goal of the experiment is to find new ways to grow crops in hot weather that can result in better harvests. The National Science Foundation awarded U Arizona School of Plant Sciences a $3.5 million grant for this project. The really important thing about this grant and what makes it different and a bit unique is this collaboration between biologists, computer scientists, and engineers. And those are things that we have strengths in at U of A, um, and so we can, we can bring the whole package to our partner universities. In Tucson, Valer Rodriguez, Cronkite News. 
The project is expected to take course over the next five years, and the results can help other states with growing crops under extreme hot conditions. Speaking of withstanding the heat, the valley is looking to warm up this week, hitting into the first 80s of the year. Evan Liss is in the Cronkite News Weather Center to tell us more about what we can expect. The biggest weather headline this week is the absolutely stunning weather that stunning weather that we're going to be having in Phoenix. It's, it's as good as it gets for this time of the year in February. We're going to have 80 degrees return for the first time since early December. We had those record breaking 80 degree days at that point. Sunny, dry until Tuesday when we have a weather uh, system moving through our area that's going to drop our temperatures down. But the 80s cover us for Super Bowl Sunday and for Valentine's Day uh, right up until Tuesday. What's responsible for it is this big, unseasonably strong ridge of high pressure that's kind of just going to be floating off the western coast of the United States as we go into the weekend. Uh, that's what's inducing these sunny and very warm conditions. And it's actually right around Los Angeles, as you see. That's our Super Bowl host city for this year. And uh, this strong ridge of high pressure mixed with offshore downhill warm, dry Santa Ana winds. These two things could combine to give us the warmest Super Bowl Sunday in history. So we'll have to keep our eye on it uh, and see if those records are broken. Tomorrow in Phoenix, our highs 81 degrees, 10 plus degrees above average for a lot of these places. 79 degrees in Yuma, 52 degrees in Flagstaff. Uh, it's really a wonderful forecast for this time of the year. Mid-February, we start to warm up, so that's what we'd like to see. Uh, going into the end of the week, as I said, stunning weather. Super Bowl Sunday, 81 degrees, no clouds. Then Valentine's Day, 81 degrees as well, with uh, just a couple mid to high level clouds. Then as we head into the beginning of next week, we have a storm system move through on Wednesday, starting to, or excuse me, Tuesday, starting to drop down our temperatures. Wednesday, it clouds up, and we stay in the upper 60s. For now, I'm Evan List in the Cronkite News Weather Center. I'm Zachary Larson. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. We'll take you to the WM Phoenix Open at the TPC in Scottsdale and check in on the Celebrity Pro-Am Tournament. Your favorite member benefit is getting better and bigger. This is wonderful. Over the next year, Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. They give us all that they've got. From your favorite cooking and travel series. Even the stairs are breathtaking. To history specials and award-winning documentaries. Better and bigger. That really is the fun part. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app. Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Zachary Larson, and this is your Cronkite Sports Report. The WM Phoenix Open held its annual celebrity program this morning, and there were plenty of big names on hand. Let's head out to the TPC Scottsdale, where Cronkite News reporter Ashley Angle followed a top NFL quarterback who played alongside the top player in golf. Yeah, Zach, I'm here on number 18 while celebrities are calling through, including number one golfer John Rahm and Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. A couple of other celebrities that I saw this morning were Michael Phelps and CeCe Sabathia, former MLB pitcher. Now, these men are actually pretty good on the sticks, but I did see Sabathia shank one on this hole earlier into a fan, but luckily the fan is okay. But four lucky celebrities, including Rogers, got to play with ASU alum and fan favorite John Rahm. I followed the pairing for a couple of holes this morning. Rahm has always done well in this tournament, but he has never won it. He's hoping to change that this year, since this is his tournament and it's super special to him and is on his home turf. It's a special event, right? It's, it's an event like any, any other, and 
it's one of those where luckily, um, you know, I'm in my home court, so I get a lot of support. So it's, it's one of those where I look forward to every year. You know, I can have a lot of fun on this golf course. Rom and the other professional golfers will tee it up early tomorrow morning to start the WM Phoenix Open. We will have coverage for you of the greenest show on grass. Reporting in Scottsdale, I'm Ashley Engel, Cronkite News. We'll have coverage from the WM Phoenix Open all week, and of course, the main show starts tomorrow. Here's a look at some notable names and tee times. There's plenty of Sun Devil flavor in this year's field, including world's number one ranked player, John Rom and current freshman and former Chaparral High standout Preston Summer Hayes. Other marquee names include defending champion Brooks Kepka and Jordan Spieth. On to the hardwood, last night the Suns found themselves in a 14-point hole in Philly, but rallied for their 14th win in the last 15 games, topping the 76ers 114-109. The win keeps the Suns atop the Western Conference standings with a record of 44 and 10. Three games ahead of the Golden State Warriors. Suns head coach Monty Williams was proud of his team's effort. It was a huge, huge win for us just because of the circumstances. And uh, the mentality of our team is to stay with it. We knew it was going to be a dog fight. Um, I'm, just, I'm just proud of the toughness and the mental stamina that we continue to show. Phoenix looks to continue the momentum rolling tomorrow night in a rematch of last year's finals against the Milwaukee Bucks. Now from the Suns to the Mercury who continue to make a big splash in free agency, signing Diamond DeShields. Last season, DeShields won a WNBA championship with the Chicago Sky, who knocked off the Mercury to win the title. The shooting guard says she's excited for a new opportunity. Coming off of a championship run, um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to to think you'll see yourself somewhere else. So when free agency started up, you know, um, I, I definitely wanted to go somewhere where I knew I could contend, somewhere where um, there was a, a, a rich tradition of, of uh, winning uh, and competing for championships. Speaking of competing, Peter Zong, a junior on the ASU hockey team, is set to suit up in a different uniform. The Beijing native will don the sweater for Team China at the Olympics after training with him for the past season, becoming the first Olympian in ASU hockey history. Zong redshirted his first season at ASU before appearing in 15 games over the next two seasons. The Chinese national team starts off their Olympic slate against the United States on Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. Phoenix Rising is coming off a successful 2021 season where they finished as the number one seed in the Western Conference. Yesterday, they played a friendly exhibition game against Houston Dynamo. The team was able to work with their new teammates and find their flow. Head coach Rick Shantz wants to make sure that everyone focuses on the team's performance first. It's not tennis. It's not golf. It's not an individual sport. It, you, this requires everybody to be involved and, and to be on the same page to be successful. That's all for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Molly. Your family's Disney World picks could become a historical artifact in the Smithsonian. After the break, we'll tell you how families can send their photos to the museum. On your time, watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons. Your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Every day I wake up, my first thought is how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Welcome, please. The amazing. Everybody that watches this, they say that I'm the greatest that they've ever seen.
Here we go, lights up. Whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. Tell us what you think. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. The Smithsonian National Museum of American History is looking to start a new project, including families' pictures from Disney World. The project will use photos to look at how the theme park has changed over time. Museum officials are looking for photos from all decades, including candid, posed, or even blurry photos. People who submit photos are also asked to share a story of what the photo meant to them. Photos can be emailed to nmah-disneystories at si.edu. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.